Well, since this section is about angle bisectors, we're going to construct one. You can review your definition up there. I'm going to start here with a random compass swing right there. Like this, we I set the compass right there. And what does that give us? Well, it gives us two intersections, one here and one here that are equidistant from H. So I reposition. I'm going to put my compass here. Right there is a needle. I'm going to swing an arc through this intersection out here where I expect to have an intersection with another arc. And that would be the arc formed by putting the needle here and swinging through the other of my two equidistant points. Beautiful. You can see that. So right away, well, I'll just leave that compass there. I'm going to grab my straight edge. I'm just going to line my straight edge up. Now, I don't really need those marks. I'm not measuring. I'm just using a straight edge. I draw my bisector, and there it is. Get this thing out of the way. I'll put in my little Tommy tick marks, and there you go. That is an angle bisector. Now, let's suppose we, um, let's see, let me clean this up a little bit. We that, lose that other compass, and we'll put a random point P on there. Now, if I slide this point P on here, this is pretty neat. This is what's new. This P, since I know the distance between a point and a line is the perpendicular distance, you can see the perpendicular to each of these two rays. P is equidistant from those two rays at all time. And it means this perpendicular distance to HK is the same as from HJ. Let's look at the theorem a little more. Well, let's start here with this angle BAC and this red angle bisector. And this theorem says a point on it, in this case we'll take D, is equidistant from the two rays. That would be AC and AB. Well, first let's draw these segments. These orange segments represent the distance because the distance, by definition, perpendicular distance to the rays, so the right angle is down there. And let's see, according to this theorem, these two are the same. And we'll just do a quick proof, even though you're going to do that in exercise 34. Just a real quick one here. So we know AD is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And I can see, or you should see by now, aha, uh -huh, angle, angle, sine, two congruent triangles. So you've got these two right there. Angle, angle, side there. And then by the corresponding parts of congruent triangles, these legs of the right triangles would be congruent. And therefore, these legs represent the distance from point D to the two sides, AB and AC. Let's have a look at the converse of the angle bisectors theorem. And I'm starting here with this random angle A. And I've got this point D, which is equidistant from the two rays, AB and AC. Remember, equidistant means these two blue segments, which are the perpendicular distance to those rays. They're both congruent. Now I could move this point D. It could be in a lot of different positions. And you see what I'm generating by moving it around. It looks like, yes, it is. It's a ray. And that ray would be the angle bisector. Now, you're going to prove it later on in exercise 35, but here, there's a quick preview. By the reflexive property, AD is congruent to itself. And there you go, right there. Hypotenuse leg. Whew, makes those two triangles congruent. I love it. And then their corresponding parts are congruent. Therefore, uh, those, well, if those two angles are congruent, and by definition, a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles is an angle bisector. And we're done. Well, let's apply our theorems here. Number six. Um, well, is DB equal to DC? Good question. We can only go by our tick marks. What have we got? We've got AD as an angle bisector. I see the tick marks there. And I've got right angles at B and C. So that would tell me the answer simply is 
Yes, angle bisector theorem. These two are congruent. Now let's see if we know our angle bisector theorem. Question is, are these two congruent? And very simply, the answer is no. No, because I don't see any indication there that it's the perpendicular distance. So the, you can't just draw any random old segment. That just doesn't work. Clearly, these two aren't the same. If you wanted to get a yes, you'd have to have this drawing. Remember, it's a perpendicular distance to the two rays. So, is EH an angle bisector? Well, let's see. This is exercise number 10, by the way. I've got these two orange segments congruent, but what I don't have is any indication of perpendicularity. So, here we go. Oh, if I can do that, my answer is just plain no. That is not an angle bisector. Now, if you wanted it to be an angle bisector, you'd have to have this instead. So you've got the congruent segments and perpendicular at these rays. Then it would be yes. But that gets a resounding no. Well, let's see if we can find the value of x. Simple algebra. Two expressions here. Let's not take anything for granted. First thing I notice, these tick marks tell me that this red ray is an angle bisector. That's good. And these right angles tell me that these segments are the distance from a point to the rays of the angle. And that's good because theorem 5.5 tells me any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant. So there you go. That gives me the ability to say that. Set them equal to each other. Oh, come on. The rest is algebra. You've got this. There you go. Easy. Well, more algebra. Number 14. Let's look at what we've got here. These two segments are the same length. Right angles here. So that tells me that this point is the same distance from this ray as it is from this ray. That sounds like theorem 5-6, the converse of the angle's bisector theorem. So this is on the angle bisector right there. And if it's on the angle bisector, then I know this. These two angles are congruent. And there's your algebra. Set the two equal to each other. And the rest is just easy. Just algebra. And please show, you know, show your steps, align your equal signs vertically, all the stuff you learned in Algebra 1. Interesting diagram. Well, nonetheless, this point is clearly equidistant from these two rays right here. So that tells me it is on the angle bisector. And the angle bisector, well, it's going to look like that. I mean, after all, that's the converse of the angle bisector theorem. And if that's true, and yet it's a right angle, well, a little arithmetic there. Obviously, they're both 45, so I can set these two expressions equal, and then we're done. There you go. So your choice was B. X must be 18. For a more formal proof of this theorem, theorem 5-5, let's start with this. Okay, AD is the angle bisector of angle BAC. And these two orange segments, well, this orange segment is perpendicular to the ray AB. This one is perpendicular to AC. That's our givens. And let's move on to this. By definition, angle 1 and 2 are congruent. Angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. Okay. And again, our good friend the reflexive property saying the segment AD is congruent to itself. And then... Perpendicular lines form right angles. All right, no surprise there. And of course, theorem, I left off that number, I can't remember, 2.1. Oh, I don't care about the theorem, but if two angles are um, right angles, then they're congruent, right over there. And that tells me, sets me up right now for these two triangles congruent by angle, angle, side. Got it right there. And then by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. These two segments are congruent. And that's what makes them 
That's what makes D equidistant from the rays AB and AC. A little more formal proof, and now we're done. Now here we go. We're going to prove the converse of the angle bisectors theorem. So I'm going to start with this angle A. And I'm going to put all this in as my given. Diagram is given. Now you can say BD is congruent to CD. BD is perpendicular to AB, etc. I'm just going to say diagram. So go ahead. All those things are given. Well, then our very next thing I'm going to do, our good friend, the reflexive property. I see two triangles are both going to use AD, and those two triangles will be BAD and triangle CAD. Now, even though, and you know they are reflections of each other, they're reflections, the triangles are congruent by HL. Stop saying the reflection property. They're reflections congruent by HL. So now, let's move on from there. Our good friend, corresponding parts of congruent triangles, the two angles here, and I'll call them one and two, they're congruent by that old acronym CPCTC. Not in your textbook, but in a lot of other books. So now, I've got here, I've got a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. That sounds like a definition. Yes, that if a ray Divide. This is back in chapter two, everyone. And we, we have a sheet on these definitions. If a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it is the ang bisector, or it bisects the angle. 